This is John from the University Skills Academy and today we're going to discuss budgeting while you are a student. Some very simple maths. Income versus costs. It's an age-old economic problem, limited funds, unlimited choices. Let's start this exercise by looking at costs. Break up your costs into each of their component sections. These sections I've included here are education, living expenses, rent, food, transport, clothes, recreation, planned holidays, larger purchases. There may be others you could think of, so don't be limited by my discrete list here. Under education, course fees per unit or subject, tools if it's a hands-on course or a trade, uniforms, books, field trips, memberships, loans, all of these things to be considered what actually costs to attend school. There may be student union fees, sports union fees, these sorts of things. Where you need to live away from home and need to rent a place to live in, is it possible to have, say, a four-bedroom house, use one bedroom for yourself and sublet out the other three rooms? And that way you could possibly make a profit from your accommodation. Are there any other ways you could have a payment made to reduce the cost of where you live? For example, any sort of government loan, any sort of government subsidy, if you're a retired serviceman or servicewoman, components of the 9-11 Act will give you accommodation allowances for the duration of your full-time studies. Can you live at home and not have to pay rent while you're studying? Things to consider, but it is a cost and it needs to be accounted for. Food. The cheapest food you can eat is that that you grow yourself and cook at home. Even if you can't grow it yourself, that food that you cook at home is significantly cheaper. Take, for example, a packet of chips. On a per kilo basis, those potatoes cost you at least $26.60 per kilo. A bowl of boiled potatoes will cost you $3.50 per kilo. That's a 580% increase for the packet of chips on a per kilo basis. Now, in all fairness, we should perhaps cut that in half because to cook the potatoes so you can eat them, there's a cost of the electricity, the water, the time you put into actually preparing it. Even so, that's still a significant increase against the actual price of the food. Think about how you can reduce your costs of eating. One really good way is to cook as many meals or prepare as many meals as you can at home and take them to class with you. Transport. If you don't own a personal motor vehicle, you'll have to rely on public transport where you need to use public transport to get about. If you live in a town where you can walk from home to school or to campus, to the amenities, to the sports grounds, that sort of thing, then maybe you can do it all. But if you need public transport, look at how many journeys per week at what cost per journey. If you own a personal motor vehicle, look at the petrol or in your terms, in American terms, gas that you put into the tank, the services per year, the tires, the registration, insurance, any loan payments against the car. These sorts of things need to be included in the budget. Clothes, wet weather clothes, cold weather clothes, going out clothes, sporting clothes, shoes, socks and underwear. Now, with your next pair of jeans, perhaps, does it have to be a JAG item or will Levi's suffice? Consider this question fairly solidly. What is the difference between a want and a need? And then spend your money accordingly. Recreation. What percentage of your income can you afford to spend on recreation? How many times a month will you go out to the movies or rent a DVD or hire a download film or go to a party where there's a gate fee to get in? What sort of recreation are you doing that is actually sharpen the saw recreation as a now one of the forms of recreation is a high quality library. Planned holidays. How much are you going to spend on your holidays? What percentage of your income can you put away for a holiday? Look at the departure dates. Look at the whole cost of the holiday and work out how many weeks you have left before you depart or have to buy the tickets, plural, and pay for accommodation where need be and work out how much per week you need to put aside for that holiday. Quite often for these events, a separate bank account is a handy tool to use planned large purchase i'm talking about a car a house a business a computer a fairly expensive set of books same deal look at what your proposed purchase date is look at your income look at the surplus income against your weekly costs and see how much can you put towards that large expense per pay cycle your dollar per hour rate less any taxes you might need to pay but then there's another question about your about your income generating activities during term time during semester time is how much time is that part-time job away from your books have you scheduled it in now this comes back to habit seven of good students and they focus on their assigned work and focus on their studies 
So you may need to make a judgment call on how much work and how much study time is allocated in your timetable. But it's all about balance and judgment. You need some income to survive while you're actually studying. The next question, next part of this is where you're not able to accurately estimate the costs how you go about it is you keep all your dockets or receipts for a week or two to see exactly how much you're spending on everything and then collate them in an excel sheet or on a sheet of paper see what your total costs are for the week fortnight and then add into that list things that may not be covered in that set of sample data like registration on the car etc student fees that might be once or twice a year those sorts of things and add it into your weekly actual costs once you've got a a receipt for those things and then work it out on, on what your weekly budget is at least from a cost perspective we have included an excel sheet in the handouts for this lecture so let's have a look at this you can download that from the website obviously it's meant to be changed for your personal circumstances I've done some dummy data entry the figures won't apply to you because I've just pulled them out of my limited hair supply it shouldn't be too difficult an exercise this is what the first sheet of eight looks like the whole thing is interactive so that's what your first sheet in the budget looks like this has been john from the university skills academy today we've been talking about budgeting while you're a student thank you for your time and your trouble and you will see me in the next session